Did you know that Torontians spend an average of 200 hours in traffic every year? And the average speed in some streets is even slower than a horse-drawn carriage. Some may say traffic is a problem for engineers to solve. However, when people focus on the physical sciences while ignoring the social sciences, they might end up building paths that nobody uses, posting signs that everyone ignores, or spending billions in solutions that simply do not work. Learning economics will give you mathematical, computational, and empirical tools to predict and understand human behavior so you can avoid these mistakes in your career. Let me show you an example. Imagine a city with 4,000 residents. Everyone lives in the west and works in the east. A mountain range separates the industrial and residential zones. People must drive around it through the north or through the south. The northern route has two segments. It starts with a wide multi-lane highway that can handle large volumes of traffic without congestion. It always takes 40 minutes from the west to the north point. The second half of the route has narrow streets that get congested easily. The time it takes to cross this segment equals the number of cars using it divided by 100. The southern route also has two segments. The first segment consists of narrow streets that get congested easily, and the second segment is a wide multi-lane highway. Someone proposes a new tunnel through the mountains. The new tunnel would allow people to travel between the north and south points in under a minute. Is this tunnel a good idea? A typical cost-benefit analysis would weight the, the financial cost and the environmental impact of the tunnel versus the benefit of helping people and products travel faster. This is where economics kicks in. The travel time depends not only on the physical infrastructure, but also on the choices that people make. Economic models can help us understand these choices. More importantly, they can help us predict how these choices would change after the tunnel is built. In our model, people ask their GPS navigation system for directions. Their GPS recommends the fastest route taking traffic into account. Like every other assumption, the GPS assumption is not perfect, but it strikes a good balance between simplicity and realism. A famous statistician once said that all models are wrong, but some are useful. So, what does the GPS assumption imply for our city? Notice that both routes are almost the same. If a route has more drivers, then it will be the slower route, and the GPS will send all new drivers through the other one. Over time, this implies that each route should have about half the drivers. Each driver will spend 45 minutes on a highway and 20 minutes on busy streets. The total travel time for each resident would be 65 minutes. All right, now let us figure out the benefit of the tunnel. The key thing to notice is that the tunnel trivializes the travel time between the north and the south points. We can think of these two points as one and the same. And we can split the driver's choice into two parts. How to get to this middle point and how to proceed from there. The busy streets from the west to the middle point can take anywhere between 0 and 40 minutes, depending on traffic. On the other hand, the highway always takes 45 minutes to reach the same place. Hence, the streets are always faster. By a similar reasoning, drivers will never choose the highway for the second leg. All 4,000 drivers will follow the same route. They will spend 40 minutes on each leg, and the total travel time will be 80 minutes. This travel time is worse than before. Our model says that the tunnel would actually increase travel time by 15 minutes. This is not, of course, what most people would expect. The common sense is that adding or widening roads without changing the number of trips should improve travel time. But that is not always the case. Adding resources to a network can worsen its performance. This phenomenon is known as Bryce paradox. It may sound counterintuitive at first, but there is a perfectly reasonable explanation behind it. First, when people choose a route, they only think of their own travel time. They ignore how they themselves are causing traffic for other drivers. If people ask their GPS for the route that creates less traffic, Bright's paradox would go away. But most people don't do that. Most people ask for the fastest route. In economics, this is what we call an externality. Because of the externalities, the roads are not used efficiently. 
The second part of the puzzle is that the tunnel creates a coordination problem. The original network splits traffic among two attractive routes. Each driver uh, shared roads with only half the people. The tunnel would create one very attractive route that everyone would like to use. Now, each driver would share the roads with all the people. The inefficiency from the externalities would be amplified. Our example is an extremely simple city. Briar's paradox can actually arise in much more realistic networks. Suppose that you create a network at random. You choose a road at random and you increase its capacity also at random. The probability of making travel time worse is close to 50-50. Of course, widening some roads with adequate planning can improve travel time. But the planning must take into account how people make choices. Solving traffic models with realistic traffic patterns is not easy, but it can be done. Recent studies have found some real-life streets that could be close to reduce traffic in cities like New York City, Boston, British London, and Winnipeg. Nobody has done this yet for any city in Ontario, as far as I know. Also, there are at least 70 well-documented real-life cases of road closures that improve traffic. A famous example is the controversial Embarcadero Freeway in San Francisco. A proposal to demolish the highway was rejected in a 1986 referendum. Regardless, an earthquake destroyed the highway in 1989. Seeing how the traffic did not get any worse, the highway was not rebuilt. There are currently dozens of major cities around the world, including British London, Paris, Berlin, Rochester and Montreal, that are closing and narrowing streets. In 2003, this expressway in Seoul, Korea, was transformed into an open water canal with walking paths and amenities. The closure of the expressway was only one part of a very ambitious and very successful project to improve mobility in Seoul. Without formal models, it would be very difficult to understand or even imagine that closing streets can make traffic better. In intermediate microeconomics, you will learn decision theory, game theory, and other useful tools to model and predict human choices, not only to fix traffic, but also to alleviate poverty, to manage a sports team on and off the pitch, to play a game of cards, to understand political polarization, or to study countless other forms of human behavior. Thank you.